Hi, I'm Dr. Roger Foss, an orthopedic surgeon in Nevada, and we'll be talking in this video about why I use spinal anesthetic for joint replacement. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a lengthy video and a little bit detailed, so I hope I don't bore you. I'll try to keep it under five minutes, okay? So traditionally, uh, we have done joint replacements under general anesthesia, and most patients are, under, are familiar with general anesthesia. That's where you get put completely asleep. They put a breathing tube down your mouth inside your trachea, and you're connected to a ventilator machine, and they use principally uh, inhaled or gas anesthetic to keep you asleep. So that medicine sedates your brain and uh, keeps you under anesthesia. Um, and in addition to that, generally the anesthesiologist would give you additional medications to uh, give you pain relief. So uh, gas anesthesia doesn't block pain at all. So they'd have to give you some narcotics and it doesn't make you paralyzed. So you would have to have some paralytic medicine to keep you from moving on the table uh, through the procedure. And that was the way things are done. It's still the way things are done uh, for many other specialties. Um, but over the last several years, uh, myself and most orthopedic surgeons have transitioned away from general anesthesia for most of our cases. So the, the, the um, I was going to say the new kid on the block, but it really isn't new. But, but what we're doing now uh, for most of our joint replacement patients is spinal anesthetic. So that's a single shot uh, down low in your spine. There's no spinal cord anymore down where your nerves are. Single shot in still medicine, and it numbs your nerves up for about two hours, two to three. And it gives us a great uh, period of time where you're com completely paralyzed, completely pain-free, um, so that we can do surgery on your hip and knee or lower. Uh, you still have to have some form of sedation because most people don't want to be awake through the procedure. That's, in fact, one of their biggest fears, that they're awake and aware of what's going on during the, the replacement or other lower extremity surgery. And uh, that's not our, our expectation. We want to have you asleep and unaware of the procedure while being under a spinal. And what medication we use for that is a medicine called propofol. So if you've had uh, a colonoscopy, um, then you're aware of propofol. It's a white substance. It's uh, isolated from soybeans, believe it or not. But it's a beautiful anesthetic in the sense that it's immediately effective. So you, turn, you literally turn it on like a light switch and the patient goes to sleep. You flip the switch and within seconds the patient wakes up. And it has very few to no lingering effects. There's no sedation or nausea, mental confusion afterwards. So um, it allows a procedure to be performed with a completely paralyzed, pain-free patient who's unaware of the surgery. But then when you wake up, you feel, you feel great. So uh, that's now become my standard. I think we started about eight years ago switching over, and now over 95% of our joint replacements are done with a spinal anesthetic. Um, and the scientific studies have now been uh, performed that show that it dramatically improves the patient outcomes uh, compared to general anesthesia. So studies have looked at um, even things like blood loss and uh, mental confusion and uh, earlier mobility and less pain uh, the kind of the key factors we want to see after joint replacement uh, are all improved with spinal anesthetic. Um, it's allowed us to transition patients to an outpatient setting to do joint replacement. So general anesthesia has such a delayed effect after surgery that it's very difficult to get people mobilized and safely home after uh, a, a general anesthesia. But with spinal, once that spinal wears off, um, your pain's been blo successfully blocked for three hours. The nurses have been able to give you a little bit of, of uh, additional pain medicine, but you're mentally sharp, you're ready to roll, and patients can be up walking two hours after surgery and go directly home at times after a joint replacement. So um, that's been a real game changer for us. So we, only, we uh, do now general uh, anesthesia only for patients that... Um, technically can't get a, a, a spinal performed. Sometimes there's such severe degeneration of the spine or they've had previous surgery so that they can't get the spinal established. That happens probably fewer than 5% of the time. So um, I do get asked the question, you know, if you've had a spinal um, surgery, are you still a candidate for spinal um, anesthesia? And the short answer is yes, you usually are. You should discuss it with your anesthesiologist, but, but most of them are able to do that um, uh, safely. Another, another point that patients ask me, there's a lot of confusion about whether there's higher risk for, 
for uh, complications and particularly uh, patients are concerned about having back pain after spinal anesthesia. Um, actually, the overall complication risk with the spinal is much lower than general anesthesia. Um, and there's uh, almost no associated risk of back pain after the injection, it's a single injection. And uh, if there's one side effect, um, it's something called the spinal headache, which happens very rarely, fewer than one in 100. Uh, someone will get a headache um, because of the pressure uh, loss from injecting into the spine. Uh, it's usually treated with just bed rest for a day and it goes away. So um, I know this, that if I were gonna get a, a, a hip replacement or knee replacement, uh, personally, or one of my family members, I'd, I'd request a spinal every time, uh, guaranteed. So that's the, in a nutshell, about the difference between general anesthesia, inhaled anesthesia, and spinal anesthetic. I hope you found this video helpful. As always, if you have found this video helpful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, remember, the best patient is an informed patient. Thanks a lot.